Thank you, uh, learners. Uh, today uh, we want to look at the short story uh, Lives uh, by a Nigerian uh, Leslie and Mecca. Uh, first of all, we need to understand the plot of this story. And uh, there's a summary of the plot on the board that this is a story about a family of three. Uh, three characters, that is Enebeli, uh, who is the husband, uh, then we have Enebeli's wife, and then their only uh, daughter. Uh, the book uh, simply refers to her uh, in that context and not matter. That's why we perceive that as the name. The family lives in a bungalow in a town called uh, Port Hot, uh, her court, uh, and very as a wife gets a chance to travel to America for three years in order to pursue uh, studies. Uh, and the is left with a girl who is approaching a teenage uh, period uh, to take care of. And uh, because of that, a number of uh, challenges arise uh, when Enebeli uh, remains with the girl behind. Because you see, Enebeli is a man, and this is a young girl who needs uh, the advice of probably a mother or an older woman. Um, uh, finally, uh, the mother uh, comes back, and uh, with the intervention of the elders, uh, she's allowed to travel uh, back to America with her daughter. I want you to see that uh, initially the first argument was that uh, Enebeli's wife was to go to America for three years, after which she would come back and uh, look for a job uh, in Nigeria. But that is not the case, finally, because there is a change. When she finally uh, gets done with her studies, then uh, she opts to look for a job, and therefore we see the trail. Now, with respect to that, it is important that we only highlight episodes that will help us understand these uh, challenges. And uh, the first episode is uh, disturbance at the market. So Enebeli is a man and is not used to, uh, being an African, is not uh, used to uh, taking care of a child. And the first challenge they have is that there is a separation at the market. The two of them happen to have walked to the market and then because there is a stampede uh, of two women that have caused a commotion uh, because they are fighting, then the two uh, of them get separated. Uh, these women are fighting because they have had enough of each other's what? Uh, tomatoes. Then the second episode is uh, ridicule. Uh, this is a man and therefore uh, all the time he has to be accompanied by the daughter or the fact that he has to bring up a daughter is something that is criticized. People make fun of it. And that's what the writer talks about as an adult talk that comes up during a wedding. Uh, this is a joke that is made by an uncle and it is described as scary. So uh, it is a bit satirical that uh, Enebeli uh, is uh, portrayed as a man that is doing a duty that is meant uh, for women. Then the uh, third episode is called The Moon. This is, uh, we have been told that the girl is, 40, uh, is a teenager, 14 years old, and therefore all of us know that uh, biological uh, changes are uh, on the offing. And um, there are so many questions that you'd want to ask about these changes. And uh, the belly though uncomfortable, he has to answer this question. There's the fear. Nebel is doing this because he fears that if he does not answer these questions, then uh, somebody uh, it might invite a stranger who might only come to demonstrate. Then uh, we are also told that the first moon, when the girl encountered her first menstrual circle, then this is a challenge because Nebel, being a man, does not know how to handle the situation. The girl is also experiencing this for the first time, and therefore she is not. Uh, uh, quite equipped with the right knowledge on how she's supposed to handle herself. Then uh, we are told that the first moon seeps through the uh, other side of the mattress and the girl learning that this will have to happen each and every month. 
Now, the next challenge is uh, captured in the episode called An Immoral Letter. Uh, this is a letter that the Bell's daughter writes to one of the boys in school. The boy is called Buki. And the letter states that, uh, Buki, I love you. I will give you uh, many sons. So uh, when the baby is uh, summoned to school, uh, because the daughter is uh, becoming immoral, then he suffers a lot of embarrassment. Uh, and this uh, embarrassment comes in so many ways. First of all, he has to contend in sitting on a narrow hall as he waits uh, to be addressed by the school head teacher. Then he has to sit, uh, to sit, uh, sit on a narrow bench, which is meant for, the, uh, for children. And as a result of that, the writer talks of his adult behind, finds awkward patches. The word awkward, the word narrow and narrow in the two, are pointing to the fact that Enebeli was not uh, comfortable. Finally, his uh, situation is worsened when uh, he demands to call uh, to see the boy that is spoiling his daughter. Then he finds that the boy is so, uh, has nothing that is appealing. He's not any answer. Uh, instead, uh, there are so many two things that are unique in the boy. is an equal uh, ear sizes and the fact that he's poorly shaved in the hair. Then, uh, after all this, he promises to make a change uh, which does not uh, come true. Then the next episode is the negative influence of the maid. In the belly and the daughter, both of them are intimidated by their house guard. As a result of that, instead of allowing the house guard to do the duty and commanding around, in the belly and the daughter have to share the what? The duties. And the writer says that some of these duties they are ill prepared for. The uh, house guard spends a lot of time watching African magic mopping the same spot over and over. This is an indication that she's not willing to perform other duties. She talks uh, to the girl in whispers. So this is the negative influence, the African magic, and then the fact that the maid introduces the, the baby's daughter to uh, giggling and talks that are questioning. And surprisingly, the baby is not concerned. The mother, however, is worried about the way the girl is being brought up, she cites a number of things. Uh, first of all, uh, she questions the way the girl is dressed, uh, the fact that the girl is giggling to a point that she can be hurt uh, from America. A sitting, uh, manner, uh, a, a sitting posture is also uh, awkward because a young girl is expected to uh, sit with her uh, legs crossed at the ankle. Then uh, the mother questions the shaggy hair and all that. As a result of this, uh, the girl becomes uncomfortable. And finally, when the mother gets an opportunity to come back, uh, then uh, uh, delays a bit. Then the next time they go, uh, she goes back to America, the communication between the two of them is not as rose as it was. We are told that uh, mistrust comes in. We are told that the girl begins looking at these communications as a duty. And finally, it brings a wedge between a baby and the wife. Uh, finally, when the woman, uh, the uh, wife, uh, the baby's wife, has a chance to come uh, back uh, to uh, Nigeria, then she uh, suggests that she goes with the child to America. But the baby is reluctant. And finally, it only takes the intervention of the elders, the elders that intervene, and that is when Enebeli's wife gets a chance to uh, travel with the daughter to America so that she takes care of her. Uh, it is true that uh, there are questions that we are expected to attend uh, whenever we come uh, through such a short story. And uh, we have three questions. Uh, first of all, the challenges of bringing up a child of the opposite sex. And a very, this is a question that will focus on uh, the challenges, that the difficulties, the problems that in a very, as a man, as a problem, as a, a problem, as a, a problem in uh, bringing up his daughter. 
That is the focus, and therefore the mother will not uh, come in. There's the bit that uh, is a bit unique. Spare the rod, spoil the child. So in this context, we are looking at uh, the reaction of the two parents. And the belly uh, is indeed aware that the daughter has challenges, but he does not have the courage to take up the challenges and correct the daughter. So in this context, the question will be focusing on what uh, instances in the book that point to the fact that there's something in the belly we have done, but he failed to do it. Uh, then uh, the third question is about technology can be a bane or a boon. We are looking at instances, technological evidences in the book. Uh, for instance, there is the mention of the sky. There is the mention of African magic. There is the mention of uh, letters. All these are essence of uh, technology. And we want to see, uh, uh, there is the technology about the hair relaxer uh, and all that. So we want to see how this technological advancement, how are they a disadvantage? African magic is what has probably brought about the poor sitting uh, uh, posture, the funny dress coat, the shaggy hair that we see in the garden. Then uh, we want to see the benefits. The other bit, when we talk of technology being a boon, then we want to see how is it helpful. And in this context, we see, for instance, it enables communication between uh, an Abelis, uh daughter and the mother. The mother is in America. The daughter is in Nigeria. Yet the two of them are capable of communicating courtesy of Skype. So at that point, we see that technology is beneficial. And that is how we want you to look at it. Remember that as we do all this, this is an, uh, these are essay-based questions and all the rules that govern essay writing. For example, we need to see an introduction that is valid. We see to need at least four uh, paragraphs that are well uh, documented, that are well followed up with the right textual details, and finally, we see uh, we need to see the conclusive remark, and that is what we go for that. Thank you.